Hello, Manfred. Good to see you. Good seeing Welcome you. Welcome to our factory. Sure. I'd like to show you around if I could. Yes, please. Let's okay, go. let's go. About three million parts come together in this factory. About 215 kilometers of wire in the airplane. Okay, this is a uh, moving line, mm -hmm. and there are about five stations. The first station is what we call systems installation. Mm -hmm. And this is where the forward and aft fuselage sections come together, which are brought from somewhere else. So at this position, it looks like two halves of an airplane. Two halves of an airplane. After the uh, initial assembly, which is what we call systems installation, then they will travel down in a U-shaped uh, okay. pattern, and they will go around and come back towards us uh, uh, in the other direction. What I'd like to show you here is what we call final body joint. They're right where the wing uh, body join is put together with the fore and aft sections of the uh, fuselage. Okay, this is where the airplane comes together for the first time. Okay. And then the landing gear. And it just so happens we have some landing gear right here, so let's go take a look at it. Okay. Landing gear, this is, a this is the largest landing gear that's attached to a commercial airplane. This is where the hydraulics connect. And I teach each and every pilot to make sure yeah, that you see the little... to make sure that they're completely seated because if they're not, I've actually had them come off. And you know what I like about the wheel, the gear, once it's in the factory, when it's still in the factory? It's that. It's so clean. It's clean. <laughs> it's so clean. You know? Yeah. yeah. As you can see, this is our 1277th airplane. Yours is a little bit before that. It's already being built uh, in the final area. So here's our number five beauty. It's incredible how large this airplane is when you walk up next to it. You know, the airports and you see it on the, at the gate, it's another airplane. You walk underneath it and it's just incredibly large. You know? Yeah, when it rains during outside shake, I usually hide under the Yeah, fuse. that's a good way to do it. <laughs> so here's our Fox Echo airplane. Here we go. All right, Manfred. Well, they put these protective covers on, so let's just pull those off. Okay. And uh, have a seat. That's just to keep your airplane nice and clean. I appreciate that. Before you get it, right now uh, it is in a uh, semi-complete stage of uh, manufacture. You can see the test equipment that's been uh, installed and the large, anything you see that's orange, orange wire on a test airplane means uh, test wire. So essentially what you're looking at here, and you're very familiar with it, is our uh, standard flight deck, uh, you know, uh, triple channel, uh, autopilot with CAT 3B Autoland capability. We've got an electronic checklist that is modifiable by the customer. I know you have your own checklist that we put in there. And then of course, we've got the electronic flight bag. And in the case of uh, Lufthansa Cargo, you have chosen to uh, put this uh, plate here and provide a uh, EFB power switch. So now you will bring your devices in put them in in this location, you will have the power, which this is a uh, very unique switch to Lufthansa. Um, and when, uh, when we meet again in two weeks and test this airplane? We will turn off literally every system in this airplane. Uh, we will turn off the electrics. We will turn off the hydraulics, uh, not at the same time. We will shut down the engines, not at the same time. <laughs> oh, I'm looking very much forward to that. Yes, it's a, it's a two hours of fun and excitement uh, to do the, the flight test. I'll come back in two weeks. <laughs> It'll look different. Gary, the whole airplane is not painted yet, but the rudder is. Paint has weight, 
and the rudder has to be perfectly balanced. So they paint that section after manufacture, then they use balance weights to balance the rudder so it's perfectly balanced before they install it. Then when the airplane goes into the paint factory, that will be masked off and the rest of the airplane will be painted similarly to uh, the rudder section of the, of the tail. Here's our GE engine, 110,000 pounds of thrust on this airplane, uh, times two, so we've got quite a bit of thrust. The diameter of this engine is equivalent to a narrow body airplane, similar to the 737. So it is quite large, but this is the largest engine on a twin freighter in the world. Now the shape of the fan blades, that's very modern. It is modern and, and basically what they found was that because of the uh, stall characteristics of the air over the blades that they got much better uh, airflow out of the scimitar, they call it the scimitar blade. And you'll also notice that they're black. Those black areas are made out of composite material. So Very this strong. this is not steel, it's carbon. It is carbon composite. The leading edges, as you can see, are, are uh, aluminum alloy. So, uh, now, for the average person, if they were to look at a 777 up close, which probably doesn't happen very often, it's a very large airplane. It is. Very large airplane. Yes. You know, 350,000 kilogram takeoff weight for your freighter. Yes. Uh, but when you get in the airplane and you sit on the flight deck and you've got 64 meters of airplane behind you, it you don't you don't it, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like it. You feel like you're you're in a sports car. That's it's, right. It's, it handles beautifully. Right. So 110,000 pounds of thrust per engine on that airplane. Um, the old 47200. I think we were at uh, 56,000 pounds of thrust per engine each. So uh, we are over that with uh, the 777 now. One triple engine is good for two. Two old 47. Seven, two yeah, old. exactly. Shall we move over? Let's go. Contact you. I'm sure you're a good flight over there. 160 heavy. Good day, and uh, we'll see you in a couple hours. That sounds good. Think of us. 